Watch family, we need to talk. Rolex just dropped the Land Dweller, as we all know, with their brand new Caliber 7135. Boasting some serious engineering with its ultra-thin movement and new Dynapulse escapement. But Grand Seiko, very quietly, might I add, has absolutely scored the industry when it comes to accuracy. Their new Spring Drive Caliber 9RB2 is insane. We're talking an annual accuracy of plus or minus 20 seconds. Not per day, not per month, per year. And that is a real flex, in my opinion, on the watch industry. So today, let's break down why Grand Seiko's movement might just outshine Rolex New Tech, but still giving credit where credit's due. And the reason I want to cover it is because I've seen the discourse since Grand Seiko have announced their movement over this week. But before I get into it, let me introduce myself. I'm Jag from Jag's Watches. I post three times a week, a channel that doesn't take itself too seriously. So if you're looking for watch content, please support the channel by liking and subscribing. Now getting back to the video, let's start with what both brands are trying to achieve. Rolex and Grand Seiko both have made accuracy of course a priority, but they go about it in completely different ways. Now Grand Seiko has been chasing precision since, since 1960 and so they've taken it to the next level with their ultra fine accuracy UFA designation. The 9RB2 movement is so precise that Grand Seiko isn't even measuring it by the usual daily or monthly rates. Instead, they're so confident in the movement that they give it a plus to minus 20 seconds a year. I haven't seen a movement talked about in a yearly fashion before, so it's quite crazy to, to see this uh, be the case with this movement. Now, Rolex, on the other hand, with the Caliber 7135 in the Landweller, which is a beautiful watch, by the way, has gone all in on efficiency and durability. The Dynapulse escapement is revolutionary. It's lighter, more efficient, and far less affected by magnetism than the traditional Swiss lever escapements. Basically, what this means is no matter how you use it, where you use it, it should always have a certain level of accuracy. That said, the Land Dweller's accuracy is plus or minus two seconds per day, which is amazing and fantastic for a mechanical watch. But compared to Grand Seiko's plus or minus 20 seconds a year, it's not even close. Now, let's talk about the secret source behind the two movements and whether we should even be comparing the two movements. Because are we comparing apples with apples here? Let's talk about it. Grand Seiko's 9R movement achieves its crazy accuracy by combining traditional mainspring with a quartz regulator, giving it the unique spring drive technology we've all heard about. There's no traditional skate escapement here, just the smoothest, most precise glide you'll ever see on a second hand. And if you haven't seen it, you need to go and see it. There's something beautiful about the second hand in a spring drive. It's so smooth. It's so just, it just makes me feel tingly. I don't know how else to explain it. It's beautiful. It's the smoothest glide of a second hand I've ever seen. The watch literally regulates itself to near perfection every single second. And honestly, it is, I love when traditions are broken, but broken in the correct way. Yes, it's a mechanical movement, however, with a quartz regulator. And this is why I say, should we be comparing this movement with the, a purely mechanical movement? I don't know. The Rolex Dynapulse escapement, on the other hand, is completely mechanical. It's an evolution of traditional escapements using a rolling energy transmission instead of a sliding friction which is genius. It makes the movement more efficient, reduces wear over time. But while it's a big leap for Rolex, it's still limited by the natural variances of a mechanical system. It is a real work of art. So the real question is, and what I want to pose to you, the audience, is what is more impressive to you? A fully mechanical movement that achieves plus or minus two seconds per day, or a hybrid movement is what I'll call the spring drive UFA, that crushes it with plus or minus 20 seconds per year. Of course, it's not just about the movements. It ha the watches that house these calibers also are worth talking about. The Grand Seiko Evolution 9 UFA comes with a frosted textured dial inspired by the icy landscape of Shinju, Japan. If you've ever seen a Grand Seiko dial, you know that they do textures like nobody else. The watch is elegant, high tech, and flies under the radar unless you know, you know. If you've ever seen a Grand Seiko dial in person, you'll know that the finishing is second to none. 
I, I think it's only a matter of time I add a Grand Seca to my collection. And now with the UFA line, it's just more of a reason to get one. Please go and check one out in person. I think they're absolutely beautiful watches and the dials are just stunning. Honestly, beautiful. Now, the Rolex Land Dweller, on the other hand, is a completely new category. There's a 36mm, 40mm, Everose Gold, Platinum, as well as Steel. All variations, I should say, are very sleek, modern, and very Rolex. They're built to be a tough and go-anywhere watch, despite being one of the thinnest Rolex calibers ever made. So, I think it really depends on what you want. The ultimate flex in accuracy or the cutting edge Rolex movement that still sticks to traditional watchmaking so who wins if we're strictly talking about accuracy i think grand seiko wins here because i feel like they put the entire industry on notice the plus or minus 20 seconds per year is something unheard of it's accuracy we have never seen before and i feel like having a watch that is the most accurate watch in the world at the moment is a flex in itself but rolex has taken the mechanical accuracy efficiency to new heights with the land dweller movement so credit where credit's due. So would you take Grand Seiko's precision over Rolex's traditional yet cutting edge movement? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if I've completely missed the mark here and I've missed another movement that I should be considering here. But if you've enjoyed the breakdown like usual, please uh, support the channel by liking, subscribing and hitting that bell icon. I've been Jag from Jag's Watches and remember timing is everything. Peace.